Chapter 26. Winning isn't the most important thing. It's the only thing. J. Caesar. You'll be all right, Gus declared, looking up from examining our fallen teammate. He's just out cold. We were gathered around Oz's still form, anxiously awaiting the gargoyle's diagnosis. Needless to say, I was relieved my mentor was not seriously injured. <clears throat> General Badax, however, was not so easily satisfied. Well, wake him up, he demanded, and be quick about it. Back off, General, I snarled, irritated by his insensitivity. Can't you see he's hurt? You don't understand, Badax countered, shaking his head. We need five players to continue the game. If Oz doesn't snap out of it... Wake up, Oz, I shouted, reaching out a hand to shake his arm. It was bad enough that my independent scoring drive had resulted in Oz getting roughed up. If it cost us the game... Save it, Steve, Gus sighed. Even if he woke up, he wouldn't be able to play. That was a pretty nasty pounding he took. I mean, I don't think there's anything seriously wrong with him, but if he tried to mix it up with anyone in his current condition... I get the picture, I interrupted, and if, I, and if we wake him up, Oz is just stubborn enough to want to play. Right, the gargoyle nodded. You'll just have to think of something else. I tried. I really did. The team kept fussing over Oz to stall for time, but nothing came to me in the, middle of a, in the way of a plan. Finally, the referee trotted over to our huddle. How's your player? he asked. Uh, just catching his breath, Badax smiled, trying to keep his body between the official and Oz. Don't give me that, the striped tunic jock scowled. I can see. He's out cold, isn't he? Well, sort of, Gus admitted. Sort of nothing, the ref scowled. If he can't play and you don't have a replacement, you'll have to forfeit the game. We're willing to play with a partial team, the gargoyle suggested hastily. The rules state you must have five players on the field. No more, no less, the official declared, shaking his head. All right, Bad Axe nodded. Then we'll keep him on the field with us. We'll put him off to one side where he won't get hurt, and then we'll play with a four-man team. Sorry, the ref apologized but I can't let him stay on the field in that condition. It's a rough game, but we do have some ethics when it comes to the safety of the players. Especially when he can use the rules to force us out of the game, Gus spat. I thought the slur would draw an angry response from the official, but instead the ref only shook his head sadly. You don't understand, he insisted. I don't want to disqualify your team. You've, played a hard, you've been playing a hard game, and you deserve a chance to finish it. I hate to see the game stopped with a forfeit, especially when the score's tied. Still, the rules are the rules, and if you can't field a full team, that's it. I only wish you had brought some replacements. We've got a replacement, I exploded suddenly. We do, Gus blinked. Where, frowned the ref. Right there, I announced, pointing to the stands. Tanani was still floating in plain sight in front of quickly. The captive demon, the official gasped. What do you think we are, Muppets? Gus snarled, recovering smoothly. Muppets? I, what, I, I, I don't think, the, sh the ref stammered. You don't have to, I smiled. Just summon the Tahoe magician, and I'm sure we can work something out. But, oh, very well. The official trotted off toward the stands while the rest of the team crowded around me. You're going to have a woman on the team? Badax demanded. Let me explain, I waved. First of all, Tananda isn't. She's not actually a woman, Chumley supplied. She's my sister. And when it comes to the old rough and tumble, she can beat me four out of five times. She isn't? I mean, she is? Badax struggled. I mean, she can? You bet your sweet axe she can, Gus grinned. Gleet, said the dragon, determined to get his two cents worth in. If you're all quite through, I said testily, I'd like to finish. What I was about to say was that Tananda isn't going to play. There was a moment of stunned silence as the team absorbed this. I don't get it, Gus said at last. If she isn't going to play, then what? Once she's here and revived, we're going to grab her and the trophy and head back for Claw, I announced. The ref's about to hand us the grand prize on a silver platter. But what about the game? Badax scowled. I closed my eyes, realizing for a moment how Oz must feel when he has to deal with me. Let me explain this slowly, I said carefully. The reason we're in this game is to rescue Tenanda and grab the trophy. In a few minutes, we're going to have them both, so there'll be no reason for us to keep getting our heads beaten in. Understand? I still don't like quitting the field before the end of a battle, the generals grumbled. For crying out loud, I exploded. This is a game, not a war. Are we talking about the same field? Chumley asked innocently. Fortunately, I was spared having to formulate an answer to that one, as quickly chose that moment to arrive, Tananda floating in his wake. What's this the ref says about using Tananda in the game? He demanded. That's right, I lied. We need her to finish the game. Now, if you'll be so good as to wake her up, we'll just... But she's my hostage, the magician protested. Come on, Quigley, I argued. We aren't taking her anyplace. She'll be right here on the field in full sight of you and everybody else. 
And you can all skip off to another dimension anytime you want, Quigley pointed out. No deal. That was uncomfortably close to the truth, but if there's one thing I've learned from Oz, it's how to bluff with a straight face. Now look, Quigley, I snarled. I'm trying to be fair about this, but it occurs to me you're taking advantage of my promise. Of course, the magician nodded. But tell you what, just to show you I'm a sport, I'll let you have Tananda. Swell, I grinned. If, and I repeat, if you let me keep Oz in exchange. What? I exclaimed. I mean, sure, go ahead. He's already out cold. Very well, he nodded. This will just take a few seconds. What does this do to our plans? Gus asked, drawing me aside. Nothing, I informed him through gritted teeth. We go as soon as it's clear. What? The gargoyle gaped. What about Oz? It's his orders, I snarled. Before the game started, he made me promise that if he got in trouble, I wouldn't endanger myself or the team trying to save him. And you're going to skip out on him? Gus sneered. After all he's done for you? Now, don't you start on me, Gus. I grimaced. I don't want to. Hi, handsome. Tananda chirped, joining in our dis discussion. If it isn't too much trouble, could someone please fill me in as to why this august assemblage has assembled, why we are standing in the middle of a pasture, and what all these people are doing staring at us? And where's Quigley going with Oz? There's no time, I declared. We've got to get going. Get going where? She frowned. Back to Claw. Gus grumbled. Steve here is in the middle of abandoning Oz. He's what? Tananda gasped. Gus, I warned. Save it, handsome. I'm not budging until someone tells me what's going on, so you might as well start now. It took surprisingly little time to bring her up to date once I got started. I deliberately omitted as many details as possible to keep from getting Tananda riled. I had enough problems on my hands without fighting her, too. It seemed to work as she listened patiently without comment or frown. And so that's why we've got to get out of here before play resumes, I finished. Bull feathers, she said firmly. I'm glad you... How's that, I sputtered. I said bull feathers, she repeated. You guys have been knocked around, trampled, and otherwise beaten on for my sake, and now we're going to run? Not me. I say we stay right here and teach these bozos a lesson. But I don't know if your D-hopper can move the whole team, she continued, but I'll bet it can't do the job if we aren't cooperating. That's telling him, Gus chortled. So, retreat is out. Now, if you're afraid of getting hurt, just stay out of our way. We aren't leaving until we finish what you and Oz started. Well said, Badax nodded. Count me in, the gargoyle supplied. You'll be the death of me yet, little sister, Chumley sighed. I managed to get a grip on Bleep's nose before he could add his vote to the proceedings. Actually, I said slowly, Oz had always warned me about how dangerous it is to travel dimensions alone. And if I'm going to stay here, it occurs to me the safest place would be surrounded by my teammates. All right, Steve, Gus grinned, clapping me on the back. Then it's decided, Tananda nodded. Now then, handsome, what's the plan? Somehow I had known she was going to say that. Give me a minute, I pleaded. A second ago, the plan was to just split, remember? These plans don't just grow on trees, you know. I plunged into thought, considering and discarding ideas as they came to me. That didn't take long. Not that many ideas were occurring to me. I found myself staring at Chumley. He was craning his neck to look at the stands. What are you doing? I asked, irritated by his apparent lack of concern with our situation. Hmm? Oh, sorry, old boy. The troll apologized. I was just curious as to how many devils were in the crowd. There's a lot of them. There are? I blinked, scanning the crowd. I don't see any. Oh, they're disguised, of course, Chumley shrugged. But you can see there are, as if you check. With the odds that with the odds that were being given on this bloody game, it was a sure thing they'd be here. He was right. I'd been so preoccupied with the game, I had never bothered to check the stands. Now that I looked, I could see the auras of other demons scattered throughout the crowd. It's too bad we can't cancel their disguises, I muttered to myself. Oh, we could do that easy enough, the troll answered. We could? Certainly. Devils always use the cheapest, easiest disguises available. I know a spell that would restore their normal appearance quickly enough. You do, I pressed. Could it cover the whole stadium? Well, not for a terribly long time, Chumley said, but it would hold for a minute or two. Why do you ask? I think I've got an idea, I explained. Be back in a minute. Where are you going? The troll called after me as I started for the sidelines. To talk to Griffin, I retorted, not caring that the explanation didn't really explain anything. 